Today, we're going to create two Dataverse tables. Right? And our Dataverse table is going to have all the usual suspects. So we're going to have you know, text columns, date columns, uh, price currency column, a choice column. So we have to check some choice sets. And then, of course, an image column. Then, because you know what good is data unless it's related, we're going to add a lookup column. So setting up relationships both between these two tables and a third table that already exists in the common data model. And we're doing all of this as part of our series on vendor and product management, right? We're going to compare Power Apps Canvas apps to Power Apps model driven apps. Yeah, yeah, right. They're both going to use these same tables. So we're going to build these inside the solution we created in the last video. Well, let's switch over to my desktop and table. Now, obviously, in order to build some tables, we got to have an idea what we want to build. And so for one second, I wanted to show you some different options. Like if you're one of those people who want to design things, you know, you might use a tool like Lucid Chart. You can see I kind of did an example here. I've been known to just go into Excel and build. And so in here, this is actually the image, but I just lay out the tables in Excel because I like Excel. Um, the other way that we will sometimes do this, and this is what I most typically will do, is jump in here and do it in a picture, right? So I have a little whiteboard desk here. So I just wrote out on my desk today, here are the tables I want to have, a products table and a vendors table. And then the different you know columns I needed, so name, price, terms, so the term is a choice set, description, vendor is going to be a lookup to vendors, and then a product image, and then vendors here, name, region, which is also choice, contract date, um, approved, which is a yes, no, I didn't mark that, but that's what it'll be. Main contact is going to do a lookup to one of the CDM, one of the built-in tables called contacts, and then logo, right? So the key here is that when you're designing this stuff, just find what works for you. So is it Excel? Is it a picture? Is it a fancy program like Lucid Charts or maybe Visio? I don't care. You pick one. We'll take. We'll use it. But there you go. There's what we're going to build because this is the actual example I had. So I'll drag this over to the other screen and let's switch over to Power Apps here. Now to build, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we're in solutions and then we're going to use the video vendor and products app solution that we built in the first video, right? So here we're going to jump in. The solution is completely blank, right? There's nothing in here because we haven't used it yet. And so we're going to go up here and we're going to start with new table and then table. Now keep in mind, if you'd already created the tables, you could have done add existing, but we're not gonna worry about all that. We're just gonna build what we need. And we're actually going to start with vendor. And the reason we're gonna start with vendor is because it doesn't have a relationship to product, but we need product, product has a relationship to vendor, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? But that's what we're gonna start with. So that looks good to me. And here we're going to say save. And after more than a few seconds, it drops us in here and we can start to work with it. And so all we need to do today is get those columns created that we just talked about. And so the first one name, right? That's the primary name column. It came in and we created it. So we don't have to create that one. And so then what we're going to do down here is just hit the little plus. And so the first one we need to create is region. So region for us is going to be a choice column. So data type will be choice. And then a choice here. And so then it's going to give us some different options. Do you want to sync with global choice? Yes or no? So this is the idea. Do you want this option set to be available through the entire environment or just for this table? And so if you're not sure, usually we'd say just go ahead and sync it with a global choice. You know, that's kind of the default, but you know, you can make better decisions there. In our case, we're going to just go ahead and do yes. And we're going to say new choice. We want to make a new one. Now, anytime I create a choice, I always make sure that they are name something like that. So I'm going to call this region video choice, right? And we're going to throw video in front of a lot of stuff just to make my life easier later. And so then for the regions here, we might do something like I'm going to go with Earth as one of my regions, Mars and the moon, right? You were probably thinking more like countries or states or providences or whatever. Yeah, I decided to go with actual like planets. I don't know. I'm a dork, whatever. So yeah, we got some choices. We're going to say save. And then now we have to pick it from the drop down here. So you'll click here. And then in this hot mess, you can type. So we just start to do region. And so you can see the test one I did earlier. And then there is region video choice. There's also a built in region, but we're not using that one. We're using the one we just did. And we don't want a default choice. Perfect. We'll say save. Great. That one's done. Now, I also I might need to make my life easier so I know what's going on, right? You're going to go here, hit this little drop down. And we're going to deselect all these fields. I only want to see the fields that we're creating. And so name, which we know we created, but we want to use and region say save. So this way we can kind of see this line up as we go, right? Now we add our next one, which is going to be contract date. It'll just be there nice and happy, right? I just have to spell contract date, right? So for the data type of this one, we're going to do date and time. And then under format, we're going to change this to date only. 
Now remember, if you truly only want it to be a date with Dataverse, then you have to go down here to advanced options, and then you're gonna change the uh, time zone adjustment to date only, right? This will make it an actual date. We're not gonna get into all those details. I've covered it on other videos, or this is the type of stuff that Juan will be covering in his Dataverse and model-driven class. But that's what we're going to rock with here. So we'll say save. We also wanna do an approved column, right? Or then approved vendor. So we'll hit plus and cross approved. And for the data type here, it is a choice, but it is a yes, no. Now in SharePoint, yes, no's are Booleans, true, false. Here they are the option yes, the option no. They're just kind of a weird little choice set. I don't really love the way Dataverse does this, to be honest, but we're gonna rock with it and then just say save. Okay, so then now we wanna do our main contact, right? So hit plus again, we're gonna call this main contact. And so for this data type, it is going to be a lookup and we're going to do a lookup and then we're gonna say related table and we're going to search for contact. Now, for whatever reason, I have two contacts. I'm pretty sure it's the second one. I hope I get it right today. Hopefully you do not have multiple contact tables. That's weird, but there you go. There are the different, uh, that's all I need to do, right? This is gonna then create a many to one relationship, right? So it's saying that in vendors, they all can be related to one contact, right? But contacts have many vendors. So many to one, and this is all is getting set up for you. You don't have to understand that in too nerdy of a detail, but sometimes you hear those words, so it's easy to understand, all right? So we'll say save. All right, and the last one here, super easy. We're going to do our logo. And so for this one, we're going to do a file and then an image. We are gonna say it's a primary image and that's it. We'll say save. If you're curious, primary image just means if there's multiple image columns, if we're doing any type of auto place where the image is showing up, it's going to use this one over the other image columns. If you only have one, that would show it anyway. So that gets us all of our columns. Now we wanna just quickly put in some fake data, right? Anytime that you're working with data, it's always easier to have two or three records. So when we add it to a gallery or view later, right, there's something there so we can validate that what we think we should see is seeing. So I'm gonna quickly do that, hold on. Okay, so you can see I clicked through there, I just added a couple vendors, did the lookups. Now, you can't add a logo through this interface, so we'll have to wait and do that in a later module, but for right now, we've got enough data to kind of move on. So speaking of moving on, let's back out of the tables here and let's go over to, or let's create our next table. And our next table is gonna be the product table, right? So we'll say new table again. And then the display name for this one will be product, right? And this primary column, so if we wanted to change this from name to product name, you can, right? This is that first column. So we didn't do this in the last one, but you can definitely always change the name. You can't change you know, the, the type, but you can change uh, the actual display name there. So we'll say save. All right, and we'll do the same thing again with our view. And I just like to do this to make my life easier, right? I'm, I'm lazy, I like to do things that make my life easier. So putting product name there, boom. And so now as we're matching this up to our little thing, which I hope we put on the screen, we got a pretty easy go. So we are gonna first add ourselves a price column. And so the price column here, that is going to be a currency column. Now remember, Dataverse does some cool stuff with currency. It has all these things around, you know, exchange rates and data types and all these currency types. Like, there's a whole bunch to learn there. I'm not going to teach you that today, but just know there's a lot to unpack with a currency column. For us, we just need to hit save because it'll work without us doing all that fanciness. All right, that's done. So now we'll add another one. We're going to add term, right? So this will be like monthly, yearly, one-time payment stuff. And so for this one, we're also going to do a choice column in. So choice. And so, yes, recommended here. And then we could use the um, one that I made earlier, right? So I did a test term choices and payment terms. I don't know, I did one of these. But we're gonna go ahead and make a new choice just to you know stay in the flavor of you knowing what's going on. So we'll solve this term video choices. And then here we're just going to do monthly, new choice, yearly, new choice, one time. Easy enough, we'll say save. Now in the drop down here now, if we search for video term video choices right there, boom, no default, and we'll say save. All right, now to add description, we're gonna talk about this one for just a second. With description, you could do single line of text, right? Or you could possibly here say, I want to do text area or uh, multi-lines of text, right? So you most likely here wanna do multi-line of text, right? The reason for this, if you just choose the regular default text, Go down here to advanced options. The maximum character count, if we start adding zeros, is 4,000. So if you're like, hey, I want to have really long verbose descriptions, a regular text field can only go out to 4,000 characters. And notice it started at default of 100. 
So make sure you're thinking about your length. SharePoint single line of text would have been 255. If that's good enough for you, great. Or what you probably really want to do here, though, is instead of text, oh, we want to go here and we want to change this to from single line of text. Oh, pick, clicking's hard to multi lines of text. And so then now if we go down here and we start adding numbers, you know, you can go up to, was that about a million characters? So, you know, that's a lot of uh, description. So we'll just leave it at 2,000 or we'll wait at 5,000, right? So that way it's more than what the other one could have done. But there you go. So choose your description, you know, things like that wisely. So we're gonna say save. All right, so now we're gonna add next, we wanna add our friend vendor. So this is gonna be our lookup to the vendor data, right? So hit the drop down here, do a lookup and lookup. And then under related table, we'll just start typing in vendor. And so you can see I've got multiple because I was not paying attention. It's going to be this vendor, right? And if you looked at the logical name, PA911, remember we set up the solution in the previous video, that was our publisher, so that's gonna be the prefix. The CDM TMP vendor, that is one of the common data model ones. We definitely want, don't want that, and we didn't put any of these other words in it. So this was my practice run. So it's definitely gonna be this one. So there you go. But that's one of those reasons you wanna be careful with naming your stuff and try to make things unique. But that should work for our lookup, nothing else to do, so then we'll say save. And then the last column is our image again, so we'll just call this product image. And then here we're going to just do file and image and make that the primary image also, and then we'll say save. Okay, now let's just create a couple of fake products. Remember, we wanted to always have some data in here, and we'll walk through one together because we didn't walk through one last time, and so we'll call this uh, Power Apps 201 Live. And then the price here is going to be 950. And then the term is a one-time payment description, the best class for Canvas and Power Automate. And then for the vendor, we hit the drop down, and there's our two vendors telling us we've wired all this up together. And so that's with Power Apps 911. And then obviously the image, right? We talked about this before, but you can't enter the image because this interface doesn't let you. So we'll have to do that elsewhere. All right. I'll add a couple more, but we'll kind of fast forward to that. See you in a sec. Perfect, right? So there you go, we got some data. Everything is connected, so we're all set. So in the next episode, we'll be able to start building. Hopefully I'll see you there. To get to the next video, just click up there. And if it's not there, just remember you're ahead of the game. The next one will be published tomorrow. So hopefully you're a subscriber, you'll get notified right away when that video drops off tomorrow. Yeah, and with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.